Hi and welcome. Uh, we're still looking at chemical energy changes and then we're looking at equilibrium graphs. And we've already looked at equilibrium graphs in the previous video. And um, I'll just repeat some of what I said there, but also then looking at the changes uh, that, that can happen in a reaction and how it favors the forward or the reverse reaction. So first of all, um, here is an example of an equilibrium graph. It's basically, um, I'm saying here it's quantity versus mole, that's wrong. It should be concentration. Um, so yes, it is quantity, uh, but it's quantity relative to the other products. Okay, so in my reactant, I see I might have more of reactant A. So there's reactant A. How do I know A is a reactant? Okay, because I am starting, I'm, I'm not starting on zero. Okay, so A, and then I've got reactant B which um, I know is also a reactant because I'm not starting on zero. And so there's reactant B and then react uh, and then C I know is a product. How do I know that C is a product? Because C started on nothing. There was nothing for it. So A and B was added together and it produced C. How do I know this is a reversible reaction? Well, just based on the graph. Well, if one of the products went down to zero, it means that product was completely used up and not produced again. So then it couldn't have been a reversible reaction. But since neither of the two go down to zero, it and yet why aren't they producing more of C until one of them is used up? Okay, and uh, that is because C is then decomposing into A and B and again. Okay, so that means this is a reversible reaction and C is decomposing now. At this point here, we can see right, right about here, um, all of the uh, components in this reaction levels out and stays constant at that horizontal point. So at this point, we have reached our equilibrium. Now, and now at this point, we can go and calculate our equilibrium constant by taking the concentration of C divided by the concentration of A and the concentration of B obviously depending now on what are the coefficients uh, what color am I going to use what's the coefficients here A, B and C and that would be the exponents in my reaction okay but that being said um, this this part helps me at least uh, coming from a mathematics perspective to know how the changes in um, the the conditions for the reaction affect the equilibrium position in the um, in the end okay so first thing that we're going to to look at is what would an increase in temperature okay what would an increase in temperature do to this reaction so temporary sure due to this reaction and uh, and let's look at the graph now at this point it is going to depend on whether we have an endothermic or an exothermic reaction so let's start with i'm just guessing one Okay, that our enthalpy is less than zero. If enthalpy is less than zero, remember enthalpy um, is the difference in the internal um, uh, uh, energies and enthalpy tells me how much energy do I need to add to the system. So if it's a negative energy, I'm not adding any energy to the system, it's adding energy to me. So it is an exothermic reaction. Exothermic means heat is a product heat is a product so if I am increasing the temperature I am favoring the reverse reaction because I'm adding products so I'm favoring the reverse reaction okay now if I were to favor the reverse reaction it lit it's literally telling me that I will end up having a higher concentration of reverse means I'm producing more reactants Okay, so I will have, in the end, a higher concentration of reactants, 
a lower concentration of products. So in the end, my concentration for my reactants will be higher. Okay. Higher concentration for reactants. Both reactants will increase. Okay. And therefore, the concentration of my of my products. Oh, sorry, that was the wrong one. Okay, this one should increase. Okay, but the reactant or my my products must decrease. These my products. The one red. It will have a lower a lower equilibrium position. Okay. So um, I'll show you now why I left open this this little gap. So what I just first want you to notice is the equilibrium positions. Notice that both the equilibrium positions, in other words, the horizontal positions for um, for the reactants increased because I favored the reverse reaction. So there will be a higher concentration of them and the equilibrium position, the horizontal position decreased. So at this point in time, uh, at this point in time, I am increasing the heat in the reaction. Now, the effect at this point would be that um, because I've added heat to the system, so I've got a, let's actually just not use the colors that we have here, okay because I have A plus B in a reversible reaction producing C, but this is, um, but heat is a product, so plus heat. If I add heat to the system, I am, um, I am favoring the, uh, not favoring, I'm adding products to the system. If I add products to the system, there's more successful collision in the product, which in this case is a decomposition reaction producing more of A and B. So immediately there's this effect that A and B is being um, uh, produced more. So I've got this effect. But now when I increase, when more A and B is produced, it means there is an increase in the concentration of A and B. When there's an increase in the concentration of A and B, there's more successful collisions between A and B producing C again. So yes, there is a, um, a the reverse reaction is favored, okay. But as I'm increasing the concentration, it again favors the forward reaction. So that's why it doesn't just favor the reverse reaction until there's no C left. C is still being uh, supplanted by um, the synthesis between A and B. So. Um, yes, it increases, but at some point it stabilizes. Okay, so it has that effect. This one, yes, there's an immediate effect. It starts increasing, 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 but then it stabilizes. Now, um, the same with the products. Yes, because adding heat, all of a sudden there's a decrease, uh, there's a decomposition of C, decrease, decrease, but at some point it stabilizes. Okay, so this is what it will look like. At, if at some point I were to add heat to a system, all of a sudden, the um, whatever whatever whether it's a um, forward or reverse reaction will be favored, and uh, and overall, we will see that um, the effect stabilizes after some point. Now, just considering your Kc value, what will happen with the Kc value? Will it be affected? Well, let's see. Both the numerator sorry, both the blue and the um, pink was increased. Okay, that's A and B. I should have put it here. Okay, so A and B was increased. Okay, and B was increased. And I should have put B now in pink. A and B increased, but C was decreased. C was decreased. Now, if this is a fraction, if I decrease the numerator and increase the denominator, I am decreasing the Kc value. Okay, so the Kc value is decreasing. So yes, the Kc value is affected by a change in temperature. Now, what if it was an exothermic reaction? OK, 
Okay, exothermic. No, this was the exothermic, was it? Uh, endothermic. So what if it was endothermic? So change in enthalpy was positive. I need to add energy into the system. So again, what happens is that if if I have this reaction, I will have A plus B plus heat. Heat is a reactant in the system producing producing C. So if I add heat to the system, so if I increase the temperature, then all of a sudden I would be increasing um, uh, the amount of products, sorry, reactants, which means that the reactants will have more successful collisions, producing more of C. So um, when there's more successful collisions, I will eventually have that my that my equilibrium position will go down. Okay, equilibrium position for both of these will go down. Okay, so you can see that's where they used to ha be have equilibrium. Both of them have gone. Uh, sorry, again, <laughs> doing the wrong one. Okay, there, both of them has gone down. However, the equilibrium position for my product must go up. Okay, and how will this, and again, this doesn't happen immediately. Okay, I don't all of a sudden have a higher concentration, but um, that change causes an effect to get started. So um, in my two reactants, A and B, they will all of a sudden start going down because there's a sudden change in temperature. Okay, obviously, if, this is, if the temperature is being increased, then this would rather look like that, okay, like that. But if there's a sudden change in temperature, so all of a sudden you put this reaction over a flame, um, then it has this sudden drop, okay, and then the pink one has a sudden drop, a sudden drop and then equalizing. And then the red one, because there's a sudden change in this reaction, there's a sudden change here, increasing it. So again, notice here what we have in our Kc value is my the concentration of my reactants increased. Okay. The concentration in my um, product A and the concentration in my product C, sorry, B, decreased. Now in a fraction, if I increase the numerator, I'm increasing the fraction. If I decrease the denominator, I'm increasing the fraction. So I'm increasing, increasing, so I'm definitely increasing my Kc value. My Kc value is increased by a change in temperature if it's an endothermic reaction. But again, don't go and study this off by heart, just go and work it out, go figure it out, um, and uh, you'll see it's really not that difficult. Okay, um, I, I want to stop this video here because it's, uh, it's getting long, uh, a bit long. So in the next video, we'll look at the graphs, the effect of the, on the graph if we have a change in pressure and then a change in concentration. We'll see you there.